now you're going to have to just look up to see what I'm doing. So what you're going to do in the second posture, or the second movement, is you're going to be bringing your legs so that they're perpendicular to the ground while your chin is going to your chest. So it's going to look like this as you inhale, you're going to go like so, and exhale and go like this. Now, if you have low back problems, if you have low back problems, take your hands and tuck them underneath the lower part of your spine, and then breathe in and go up like that. If that still is problematic for your abdominal muscles, you can also do a go like this, where you breathe in, your chin goes to your chest, your knees come up, and then you breathe out and go like so. So one of those modifications. The idea with the modifications, though, is that as you do them, imagine that you're doing it the correct way. Imagine that you see yourself being able to do it because mind always precedes body. All right. So make the adjustment to make yourself comfortable, but then try and see in your mind's eye that you're doing it with the legs straight and the chin. So again, you breathe in, your chin goes to your chest, your legs come up, you breathe out and go down. You breathe up and go down. And again, breathe in, go up. Chin goes up, you don't have to bring your shoulders off the floor. Go down. Breathe in, go up. And go down. Chin comes up to chest. Legs come up. And down. Two more times. Breathe in, go up. And down. And up, and down, and just rest now. All I want you to do is pay attention to sensations moving through your body. <clears throat> Bringing your breath back down. To a quieter place. And now what I want you to do is I want you to stand up on your own knees. <clears throat> You're standing up on your own knees. See your feet are slightly curled, but like your toes are not pointed. They're, they're tucked under, okay, like that. And your knees are about a fist distance apart. Your hands are resting either on your butt or just below your butt. And you start with this one with your chin on your chest, okay? Then what you're going to do as you breathe in is you're going to roll your shoulders back. Your head's going to drop back. And then as you roll forward, you're going to breathe out and bring your chin back down to your chest. Just like that. So breathe in. Don't arch your spine or anything like that. It's just in the shoulders and the neck. And breathe out, roll forward. And breathe in. And breathe out. And breathe in. And breathe out. And breathe in. Go back. Roll your shoulders. Make sure your hands are just behind you a little bit. Breathe out. Roll forward. No. No, you don't. You don't try and go back. You just really lift no. your shoulders up and down. Like that. One more time. And then you can sit back on your knees or you can sit cross-legged, whichever way is comfortable for you. <clears throat> what? <laughs> That's a sign of vata. You'll learn about that today. Crocking joints is a sign of vata. Wind in the joints. <laughs> These exercises were taught
um, in monasteries as a way of maintaining mental um, flexibility and physical flexibility. The idea was, I mean, in the tradition of yoga, when you really keep your spine flexible, it makes it so that you age more gracefully. But more important than that, because it wasn't that monks wanted to look forever beautiful, okay, it wasn't that goal. The goal was, though, that if you're able to feel more comfortable in your body, when you sit and meditate, you can actually be much more effective in your meditation or in your prayer life. So the idea was, rather than being focused on how rickety and crickety your body feels, you actually are able to maintain a much more stable state of mind just by doing these. And all of this is working with the chakra system of the body.